We have waited many, many months, but we have finally made it. The day is finally here. It's Detroit Pistons opening night of their regular season against the Orlando Magic. We will be previewing tonight's game in today's episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. You are Locked On Pistons, your daily Detroit Pistons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's the deal? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code Locked On. That's pricepicks.com, promo code Locked On. Again, that's pricepicks.com, use promo code Locked On. Per usual, I am your host, Kuka Hill. You can find me over on Twitter at Kuka Hill. I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Pistons your first listen. Of every single day, we are free and available on all your podcast platforms. And if you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Locked On Pistons. Hit that subscribe button or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you are listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. So, man, we have finally made it. We have finally made it to opening night of the Detroit Pistons season. It's been a long time, man. I felt like this this offseason took forever, to be honest. Um, But there's a few things I want to talk about in this episode about this game tonight. And we will be getting to today's episode or today's question of the day later on in the episode. So stay tuned for that if you're you're wondering where that is. Um, But I want to talk about a few things. First, I want to talk about a matchup between the Pistons and and the Magic that Pistons fans should be watching for. Then I want to talk about some injuries to both teams and what that could mean for tonight's game. And then I want to talk about some things I hope to see in tonight's game. So first, let's start off with this matchup. So I think the matchup to watch in this game, Pistons versus Magic, is easily the Pistons backcourt versus Orlando's front court. Orlando's front court is really damn good. I, I think last episode I talked about how high I was on Orlando. I actually thought in my predictions I had Orlando finishing ahead of Detroit in the Eastern Conference standings. I think Orlando's the team in the East that could possibly make the play in, make that surprise jump. And it's because of their front court. They have a tremendous front court with Wendell Carter Jr., Paolo Bencaro, and Franz Wagner. I think that right there is an amazing trio to have. I really, just outside of this game, I hope to watch them in other games. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. But that's the strength of their team by far. Then you go over to the Pistons side, the strength of their team, by far, is obviously Kay Cunningham, and I guess you could say Jay and Ivy. Um, It it really is just Kay Cunningham, whatever duo you want to put with them, but I'm going to go ahead and say the Pistons backcourt because I think that's where the Pistons can can outplay the Orlando Magic. The Orlando Magic will probably be starting Cole Anthony and Jalen Suggs. I think the Pistons can beat that matchup, Kay Cunningham and Jay and Ivy, or Kay Cunningham and uh, Killian Hayes, Killian Hayes and Jay and Ivy. I think that matchup, the Pistons can take on and they can outplay the other backcourt for Orlando. However, I'm really concerned about the Pistons front court versus Orlando's front court. I think Orlando has a much better front court. I actually think that's going to be the reason if the Pistons lose this game to the Orlando Magic, it will be because of that front court versus the Pistons front court. Isaiah Stewart has his hands for him tonight against Wendell Carter Jr. Wendell Carter Jr., my goodness. He had a tremendous season last year. I think he's going to have another great year this year. He's going to have his work cut out for him with him. Paolo Bencaro is the number one overall pick. Obviously, the matchup between last year's first overall pick in Kay Cunningham versus this year's first overall pick in Paolo Bencaro. That's another matchup to be watching for. But Paolo Bencaro versus whoever the Pistons decide to start for. Like, if they start Boyan Bogdanovich against Paolo Bencaro, Paolo may go off at like 25 in this game. No joke. If they start, or if they try hiding Bojan on Franz, Franz may go off for 25 plus this game. Like, I don't think the Pistons have defenders in either Bay or Bojan to stop Ben Carroll or Franz Wagner. And these guys are big. They're not small wings. They're not, you know, they, they're they big, they're strong, they're athletic. So I really like that front court. I think that's where Orlando's going to edge out Detroit. And I, I'm interested to see how Dwayne Casey goes about guarding these guys because I, I this is another matchup where I don't think the switch everything scheme on defense is going to play well into the Pistons hands 
if you switch these small guys onto the big Franz Wagner, the big Paolo Bencaro, the big Wendell Carter Jr., they're going to feast on the Pistons. I, so I hope they don't do that. I hope that's not part of the defensive scheme. And I think the way the Pistons have a chance to win this game, like I said, I think the Pistons' backcourt has to outplay Cole Anthony and Jalen Suggs. I've already said that I predict Cade to have 30-plus points this game because of everything that people have been talking about him, how he struggled in preseason. But Jane Ivey, I think, will have to have a good rookie debut into the NBA. I think he's going to have a good matchup to do so. I don't think they're going to put Jalen Suggs on on Jane Ivey. I think they'll put Jane, Jalen Suggs on Cade because Jalen Suggs is actually a nice defender. So I think they'll put Jalen Suggs on Cade and then try to hide Cole Anthony, I guess, on Jane Ivey. I like that matchup for Jane Ivey. I think Jane Ivey can take advantage of that, and he's going to have to. And then when Killian Hayes comes into the game, he's going to have to be aggressive, and he's going to have to put up some points, and he's going to have to run the offense really well. That backcourt is the Pistons' chance to win this game tonight. I don't think Bay's going to outplay Franz Wagner. I, I, I don't like that matchup for him defensively, whether he's guarding Franz or Paolo. I don't like that matchup for Stu against Wendell Carter Jr. So that's the matchup. That's the, that's the key to the game, in my opinion. Orlando's front court versus the Detroit Pistons backcourt. Which one edges out? That's what we'll be watching for tonight, man. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, though. These are two young teams who are going to be extremely exciting to watch this year, next year, two years, three years, four years, five years down the line. I think these guys are going to be going against each other for a long time now. They both got really good young cores. They're both trying to grow around the exact same time. I think this is just a preview to what you're going to see between these two teams for a long time to come. So. Stay tuned for that, man, for years to come. Um, but, yeah, tonight's game, I, I'm really excited for it, man. I can't wait for the regular season to start. I think Cade will drop 30-plus, and it's going to come down to Jane Ivey and Killian Hayes. Can he? They, can they bring their part to the game to help their backcourt beat Orlando's backcourt? Because I think Orlando's frontcourt definitely is going to bring it uh, and make it hard on the Pistons on both sides of the floor, to be honest. Um, so let me know what you guys think about that matchup. Do you guys think that the Pistons' backcourt – can perform well enough to where they'll outplay Orlando's front court. Let me know about that in the comment section down below or over on Twitter at Kuka Hill. When we come back, we have some injuries to both sides. And how does that impact tonight's game? And how do the Pistons injuries impact what they'll do with rotation, scheme-wise, lineups, etc.? We'll talk about all that when we come back. But first, let me tell you something about Price Picks that's exclusive to Price Picks, the best daily fantasy option. For you out there. So let's go ahead and just assume. I'm recording this during during the Boston-Philadelphia game. And let's assume the Lions are also playing tonight. So I want to take the over on Joel Embiid's points. The over on Jason Tatum points. The over on James Harden's assists. But then I want to flip over to the Lions game. And also take the over on Jared Goff's passing yards. The over on DeAndre Swift's rushing yards. And I want to put them into the exact same entry. That's something you can only do with price picks. You can do cross sports entries. And it's really that simple. You can pick two to five players, and if they will score more or less on their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. No competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Prize picks offers projections on any sport you can watch, such as NBA, NFL, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, soccer, WNBA, esports, NASCAR, tennis, MMA, boxing disc golf, Euro basketball, cricket, and more. And that's just, I like, I had to catch my breath at the saying all those sports. And they have even more that you can check out over at Price Picks. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's really just that easy. They're safe, and it offers fast withdrawals, currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. So download the Price Picks app or go to pricepicks.com to sign up and play daily fancy sports today. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, Price Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Price Picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code LOCKDOWN at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Again, that's Price Picks, and make sure you use promo code Locked On. So I want to thank you guys again for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Lockdown Pistons, hit that subscribe button, or you can leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you are listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. All right, so we have some injuries happening in tonight's game, and injuries suck. They're they're terrible. You hate to see them. I would love to see these teams go against each other full strength, both sides. Again, like I said in the first segment, I think both these teams have incredible young talent and are going to be really exciting to watch this year. 
So I wish we got to see both teams full strength going against each other, but we don't have that. Orlando is going to be without Marco Fultz, Jonathan Isaac, Mo Wagner, and Gary Harris. The Pistons, and I, I didn't know that I didn't know that Livers was still hurt. I thought he had practice, but I guess not. The Pistons will be without Marvin Bagley, of course, to his knee injury, but also Isaiah Livers and Alec Burks. So, which means, by the way, Nerlens Lowell is available. We'll see. Does he end up playing? Who knows? Um, but the Pistons are without Livers and Burks. I think those two guys are the surprise. Maybe not so much Burks. I don't think we've heard much about his recovery or anything. But we heard that Livers wasn't too much of an injury, like wasn't anything to be too concerned about. But he's missing the game. So that sucks. That's going to be tough for the Pistons to deal with that because Livers is one of their best shooters. He's going to be one of the guys that provides spacing for this team, whether he's in the starting lineup or he's playing with the starters in a, in, at the end of the game or playing with the bench. He's one of their best shooters, one of their best overall players, but one of their best team players, and they need him out there. So being without him is definitely a big blow to the Pistons. Um, so what does this mean for the Pistons? Well, I think, and we talked about this a little bit in the preseason, the episode uh, after the final preseason game, I think that this guarantees that you will be seeing minutes from Kevin Knox. We talked about how I thought Kevin Knox deserved to get minutes either way because I thought he played really well in that preseason game. I thought he'd at least get a look in the first regular season game. But now I think he might even get more than just a look. He's going to have to play some minutes because the Pistons are not only missing Marvin Bagley, but now they're also missing Isaiah Livers, and he's going to slide in right at right there in their spot. So I think you're going to see heavy minutes from Kevin Knox, and I'm really interested to see if he can play well. If this dude can hit outside shots, if he continue to hit outside shots like he has in a few seasons in his career, if he can shoot a high percentage from deep, he's going to get a lot of minutes for the Pistons, especially at his size with his athleticism. You can use him in transition. He can be viable in the half court at his size the Pistons need guys at his size with his length are able to hit outside shots so I think he's gonna get a chance in this first game to prove that he should be a consistent part of the rotation and I really hope he does it because I like his archetype his archetype of a player is what the Pistons desperately need this year so I hope he actually comes through and he actually plays really well so plan to see Kevin Knox tonight with Burks out you don't hear any mention about Hamadou Diallo being hurt so I think you're going to see Hamadou Diallo make his, I mean, preseason doesn't count, but I guess you're going to see him make his season debut. He missed all of preseason. You didn't, get, you didn't get to see him in there. But now you're going to see him, what seems like, in the first game. So that means the second unit is probably going to look something like, and this is going to be a guess. I'm interested to see what the second unit will be. But my guess is going to be Killian, Hamadou Diallo, Kevin Knox, and... That's where you get like that right there. After that, it gets it gets tricky. So do you start? I think there's no or not start. I think there's no way in living hell. I just there's no way Dwayne Casey would actually do this and run New Orleans Noel and Jalen Duran next to each other. There's no way. Casey would not do that to us. There's no way. So I think it's gonna be one of New Orleans Noel or Jalen Duran as the backup five. And then it comes down to who will be the backup four now. Do they try to stagger? Isaiah Stewart, New Orleans Noel, and Jalen Duran to where Isaiah Stewart can be the backup four as well. And maybe Isaiah Stewart's the first one to come out in the starting lineup and you bring in Jalen Duran, then they stagger. Maybe that's what they do. I don't know. But without Alec Burks, without Isaiah Livers and Marvin Bagley, you have someone in Kevin Knox who can come in. You have someone in Hamadou Diallo who didn't play who can come at that two spot. You got that filled in, but now you're missing that backup four. So I don't know what they're going to do with that. It's going to be extremely interesting. I don't think that they're going to start Isaiah Stewart with another big guy because if they did, then you could just say either you could just uh, have Boyan be the backup for it. But I think they're going to start Boyan with Sadiq and Isaiah Stewart. And now that leaves how you're going to work the backup center situation with Nernos Noel and Jalen Duran. I think the best way to do it is, like I said, to stagger Isaiah Stewart, get Isaiah Stewart out the game first, bring in Nernos Noel maybe. And then when the second quarter starts, you bring out Isaiah Stewart with Jalen Duran, with Killing Hayes, Hamadou Diallo, and Kevin Knox. I think that's probably what you're going to see. That would be my prediction right there. That's what I would do. Um, I think that's the best way to go about it. Um, I think the Pistons took some injuries at like their their the worst position for them to get injuries at, like their front court, and not really their center position, like their four position. Center, they're deep. 
at the four spot, I think they have a bunch of tweeners and a bunch of people playing out of position at the four. Like Kevin Knox, could he go up and play the four? Can Sadiq go up and play the four? Is Isaiah Stewart coming down and playing the four? Like, and Isaiah Livers even, is he going up and playing the four? So I feel like the worst possible position that the Pistons could have had injuries at are is is the position that they're struggling with injuries right now. So it is what it is. I think that's what you're going to see as their backup lineup. But it's Dwayne Casey. Who knows what they do? Um, he's not very creative with his rotations. So I'm, I'm interested to see what he does with the injuries now. Um, as far as it goes with um, Orlando Magic's injury, who's injured for them, I should say. Marco Fultz, Jonathan Isaac are two big losses to have for this game. But I think they were expecting these two guys to be out anyways. Gary Harris is a big loss for them too. I think he might have even been – actually. Probably not. I was going to say he might even have started for them at the two guard if he was healthy, but they're probably going to still go with Jalen Suggs. But Gary Harris is a big thing for them too. So both teams are not operating at full strength. Um, I think it's going to be a toss-up of a game. I think this is going to be a really cool game to watch. I can't wait to see it. Um, I do think that the Pistons are probably going to hurt or are probably going to feel it more with their injuries because, like I said, they're getting them at like their their weakest position. However, hey, maybe Dwayne Casey has something up his sleeve. Maybe he starts playing a crazy rotation. Maybe he plays a crazy lineup that we're not thinking of. Maybe we see Buddy Boheim play a game or play play some minutes. Maybe Braxton Key, actually. I didn't say Braxton Key. I don't think Braxton Key actually is going to get minutes this season. But maybe Dwayne Casey says, screw all the staggering stuff. I don't want to get too complicated, too creative with it. Let's just put Braxton Key in. We'll have him at the four. I guess they could possibly do that. I hope they don't do that. I hope they get creative with it. But who knows? Anyways, that's all I've got with the injuries and why I think it's going to happen with the rotation. So let me know what you guys think about that. Do you guys think Casey's going to get creative with the rotation, try to stagger some guys? And what do you guys think actually is going to happen? Let me know in the comment section down below or over on Twitter at Kuki Hill. Now, when we come back, I'm going to tell you guys a few things that I'm really looking forward to for players, what I want to see from, from some specific players tonight against the Orlando Magic. You guys will hear that when we come back from these lovely sponsors. So I want to thank you guys again for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Lockdown Pistons. Hit that subscribe button. It's the best way to support the podcast. And you could also leave a five-star review or whatever podcast platform you are listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. So the answer to the last question on the last podcast, I'll I'll read the question again. It was a funny question. I can't believe they actually put this on the card. It was actually pretty crazy. Um, The question was, what former Pistons bad boy led a controversial trip to North Korea to play basketball for dictator Kim Jong-un in 2013? And it was Dennis Rodman. And the random answer that we are selecting is from Mike Hill, In the YouTube comments, he got this one right. Man, that was a, like I said in the last episode, this was like a wild, this was such a crazy time that you had like, you had Dennis Rodman, of course, Dennis, like, like you could have had any like guy go over there, any NBA player, like calm, uh, I want to say well thought out, like, like relaxed NBA player or former NBA player go over there. But no, we got Dennis Rodman of all players going over there to Kim Jong Un. Like it was, <laughs> that was a crazy time, man. Um, but anyways, the next question for this episode is: Where did the Pistons play their home games from 1978 to 1988? Let me know what the answer is in the comment section down below or over on Twitter at Koopy Hill. So. What I'm looking forward to seeing from tonight with specific players. So I'm going to start with Isaiah Stewart. Like I said in the first segment, I think the Wendell Carter Jr. matchup is not a good one on paper. And it may very well play out as not a good matchup for Isaiah Stewart. I think Wendell is a really damn good player. Long, athletic player. Has the ability to space the floor out too. Uh, I really, really, really like Wendell Carter Jr. And he's a nice defender too. So I don't think this is a great matchup for Stu. However... I'd like to see him play well against it. I want to see him prove me wrong and prove what it looks like on paper wrong, that he can actually outplay Wendell Carter Jr. in this matchup and hold his own here 
Um, last year, Wendell Carter Jr. had 15 points a game, 10 rebounds a game, 52% from the field, 33% from deep. Um, and also had just under a block a game. I, I really like Wendell, and I want to see, can Stu guard him? Can Stu go out beyond the arc against a big? Can he hold his own inside the paint? Because Wendell is going to be a handful inside the paint as well. Um, just a really talented offensive player. And I want to see so see him go against Wendell Carter Jr. on the offensive end because he's also a really good defender too, someone who can do some of the same things that Isaiah Stewart does. So I don't think Isaiah Stewart's going to spend a lot of time in the paint, in the paint against Wendell. I don't think that would be a smart idea. I want to see can he make Wendell come out from the paint and respect him from beyond the arc. I think that can change how the game goes for Stu and the Pistons in the half court. That's a matchup I'll be watching. Specifically, Isaiah Stewart versus Wendell Carter Jr. Uh, it's going to be a tough matchup for Stu, but let's see if he can overpower it and, and come through. Um, next thing I'm going to be looking forward to, does Killian Hayes continue to keep up his aggressiveness? And does he continue to play with the kind of mindset that we saw in the preseason? Does he play well? Does he hit his outside shots? The Pistons are going to need him tonight. And, heck, throughout the, the whole season they're going to need him. But specifically tonight, like we mentioned, I think the front court is going to be in Orlando's favor the Pistons need their backcourt to come out and show out and, and outplay them. So they're going to need Killian. They're going to need him to be aggressive. They can't let him fall back into being conservative. We need him to come out here and be aggressive and try score points and put points on the board. So Killian Hayes, we're going to need a lot from him. And then obviously the two final ones are Kay Cunningham versus – or last year's first overall pick versus this year's overall pick and Kay Cunningham versus Paolo. I think that – is obviously, I think this might actually have a lot of people watching this game outside of Detroit and outside of Orlando having these two first round picks go against each other on opening night. I think that's a tremendous matchup to have. I don't think they'll be caught guarding each other too often. Um, if the Pistons actually are playing that switch everything defense against Orlando, you might catch Cade on Paolo a lot. Um, so I take that back. You might see Cade on Paolo. I don't think you'll see Paolo on Cade that much. Maybe a possession or two. I don't think so though. Um, I hope not. I hope Kate doesn't have to guard Paolo too much. I don't think that would be great for Kate. He'll probably get in foul trouble a lot. Um, but yeah, I expect Kate to come out here and drop 30 plus. I'm sticking to it. But I also think Paolo may go off this game as well because I don't like who's going to be guarding him. He's too strong, too athletic for a guy like Boyan. And even for Sadiq Bey, he's too quick um, for a guy like Bey as well. So it's going to be interesting, man. Which one plays better in this opening game? I think Cade, if he's going against Jalen Suggs, who is a nice defender, is going to have the tougher matchup. Though I still think Cade is going to play better. I still think Cade's going to have 30 points in this game. And that may be enough for the Detroit Pistons to win their first game of the NBA season. And then the second thing, obviously, Jane Ivey's rookie debut. How does Jane Ivey play in his first NBA game? His first real NBA game, not preseason. His first real NBA game. Does he come out with some jitters? Does he come out just going balls to the wall? Like, how does he come out? Does he come out aggressive? Does he play well? Because in order for the Pistons to win this game, it's not just going to be Cade. It's not going to be just Killian. They're going to need Jane Ivey also to take advantage, especially if they have Cole Anthony on him. If they have Cole Anthony on Jane Ivey, he has to obliterate that matchup. And I think he can. Like, that, that would be kind of disrespectful. I don't think Orlando really has any other options. But I think if you're Jaden Ivey and you go out there and you see they're sticking Cole Anthony on you for the entire game, you have to be, like, giving them a stink face. Like, what the hell's wrong with you? Are you serious? For real? Like, so I think Jaden Ivey can dominate that matchup. And I'm going to be interested to see, does he come out with some some butterflies, some jitters? Does that stop him from playing as well in his first game? I want to see all that. Jaden Ivey, obviously, is going to be one of the biggest things to watch in his first NBA game. Also, Jalen Duren. Does Jalen Duren play any minutes? Do they stagger and get Jalen Duren in there? And how does he play? And his first real NBA game. That's another thing I'm going to be watching for. I know he played okay in the preseason. He rebound, rebounded the ball pretty well. Um, had a few nice blocks. Uh, but if he does get some time tonight against the Orlando Magic, I'm interested in seeing how he plays against Orlando's front court. Uh, but that's really all I got for you guys, man. I'm just really interested, really excited for this game tonight, man. We've waited a very long time for this game. Season's here. It's going to be a long way. Every single day, we're going to be at it at Lockdown Pistons. The Pistons are back, man. Can't wait, man. Can't wait. All of you guys that are going to be at opening night, I believe I'm going to be there. I still have not decided if I'm actually going to go. And you guys may be looking at me like, Koo, what's wrong with you? It's the day of the game. What do you mean you don't know if you're going to go or not? Listen, 
I, I know there's going to be tickets available. I'm looking at SeatGeek right now. I know there's tickets available still. It's just a matter of I'm trying to take make my decision here, and you guys can actually help me make this decision. Do I go to opening night? I'm buying really good tickets, by the way. This is why I'm doing I'm not going to buy these really good tickets because the Pistons are pricing way too much right now for these tickets. Like, that's it's crazy. I'm not going to buy these really good tickets for two games. So I'm trying to decide, do I do I get these really good tickets for opening night? Or do I get really good tickets for the first game of the teal? And I think that's the 28th against the Hawks. I believe I believe so. I believe the first game they wear the teal is against Atlanta. So do I go to that game or do I go to opening night? And I haven't made that decision yet. That's why I don't know if I'm going to go to opening night yet or am I going to go to the Hawks game. So I don't know which one. But those of you guys who are going to opening night, let me know where you guys are sitting at in the comment section down below or over on Twitter. And also send me some videos. Send me some clips of – I know they do the opening introduction. They have a whole thing for opening night. So send me some clips. Let me know how much fun you guys have. Did you guys enjoy it? All that kind of stuff. Um, but until the next episode, man, when we recap what happens in tonight's game, the first recap of the season, man, I can't wait. I hope the Pistons win. I think they can win this game, but it's going to come down to their backcourt. We'll see what happens. Thank you guys for listening, man. Thank you for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. Hit that subscribe button at the YouTube channel. Five-star review whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Go Pistons. I think you guys can win this game. They need to start off good because the first 10 games is an absolute brutal stretch. They need this game. So go Pistons. Stay safe, everybody. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.